In this video, we'll be talking about proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs. So what are PPIs used for? Uh, well, anything that involves decreasing the amount of acid in the stomach. So this could be in patients who have GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease, where stomach acid actually goes up and refluxes into the esophagus. Frequent heartburn, which is actually an over-the-counter approved indication of these PPIs. Erosive esophagitis, which is very similar to GERD in that the bottom portion of the esophagus becomes eroded over time because of too much stomach acid. And then finally, even ulcerations in the GI tract, which you can see here. And the importance of these is that if these are untreated, they can progress into gastrointestinal bleeding, which could be a very serious problem. There are actually a number of proton pump inhibitors on the market. We've got omeprazole or Prilosec, S-omeprazole, which is an enantiomer of omeprazole, so it's pronounced S and then omeprazole. We have pantoprazole or Protonix, Lansoprazole, Prevacid, and then finally Dex-Lansoprazole or Dexalant. And this is actually an enantiomer of Lansoprazole, so it's also pronounced as Dex and then Lansoprazole after that. As you probably have already established, all of these PPIs have the same ending. They end in prazole. The problem though is that they all sound very familiar and the drug manufacturers were very clever in coming up with brand names. But as you can see, three of the brand names start with a P and uh, that can be very difficult to memorize. So what are a few simple suggestions in terms of how to keep these straight? Well, pantoprazole, Protonix, both of these have a T in the center. And if you think of the T like a plus, like a hydrogen ion, Knowing that protonix sounds like proton and nixing it or getting rid of it, that proton is represented in the center there. Looking at lansoprazole or prevacid, maybe you could imagine a, a lance or a spear going between the prev and the acid, preventing acid, which is lansoprazole. So how do these PPIs work? Well, the whole story starts with a hormone called gastrin. And gastrin is produced when the body thinks that it needs to make more stomach acid. The gastrin acts on something called the ECL cell. And that ECL produces histamine in the body that acts on the H2 or the histamine 2 receptor on the parietal cell. And the parietal cell is kind of the workhorse of stomach acid production. The other thing that gastrin can do is that it can actually directly act on the parietal cell without going through the ECL histamine pathway and it acts on something called the CCK2 receptor. So regardless of either CCK2 or the H2 receptors, the end result is that we trigger the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. So this pump, its whole job is to pump acid into the stomach or hydrogen ion and in exchange for a potassium. That's why we call it the hydrogen potassium ATPase. The way that our PPIs work is they actually turn off this pump. So regardless of how it got activated, either be it from CCK2 or H2, it doesn't matter because we're going to turn off the pump so we don't put acid into the stomach. An important counseling point about PPIs is that they should be taken before breakfast. And the reason is actually pharmacokinetic in origin. So it turns out that PPIs only bind to active acid pumps in the stomach. And it also turns out that the half-life of these agents is extremely short. So this is an example with omeprazole. And you can see that you know, the majority of the drug is absorbed within an hour, but within two to three hours, most of the drug is gone. And definitely after three hours, the drug is almost completely gone. The goal here is that we want to take the drug when our drug level is the highest, and also when as many pumps are being activated as possible. So we want to take it before a meal, usually before breakfast. So even though the PPIs don't last very long kinetically, because they irreversibly bind to the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump, this irreversible binding means that even once the drug is gone from the body, they, it actually stays on that receptor. Despite the fact that it has a very short half-life, PPIs last one to three days because the body actually has to make new hydrogen potassium ATPase pumps once the PPI has bound to its drug target. The other important counseling point is that most PPIs are delayed release products. You can see that even on the packaging for Prilosec or Nexium, they say delayed release on there. 
The reason that they're delayed release is that the drug molecule, the PPI molecule, is actually degraded in the stomach acid. So it has to be protected from the stomach acid to get past the stomach, absorbed, in order to stop stomach acid production. So because of that, we can't crush these. If you crush them, then uh, the protection is lost and the, and the PPI can be degraded in the stomach. We can open the capsules and sprinkle the granules. And certain PPIs are formulated with sodium bicarbonate, which is a, a strong base, which will actually protect the PPI in the stomach because the sodium bicarbonate will increase the stomach pH so that the PPI can pass through the stomach without being degraded. The vast majority of patients will have zero adverse effects at all while they're taking a PPI. With that said though, some patients will kind of have rebound symptoms if they were on a PPI for an extended period of time and then stop it. We can actually understand this rebound effect mechanistically. So in the stomach, we talked about how gastrin was a major player in producing stomach acid. So if we turn this pump off, we're going to have very high pH, way higher than what the body would normally want. And in response to that, the body's gonna make more and more and more gastrin, but if we have a PPI on board, it won't matter because we'll never make more stomach acid because the pump will be turned off by our PPI. If though, we start pulling away our PPI, and we start allowing for the pump to be turned on, we have all of this gastrin in the stomach that's ready to go. And as soon as that pump is available, all of this gastrin is gonna make that pump turn on. We're gonna see a ton of hydrogen ions, stomach acid, uh, get pumped into the stomach and a patient can have kind of rebound symptoms because of that. This is a very controversial area, but we do think that there may be some rare adverse effects with very chronic use of PPIs. And again, this is controversial, but the adverse effects that we may be seeing are nutritional deficits. So uh, patients being unable to absorb things like vitamin B12, iron, magnesium, calcium, pneumonia, bacterial gastroenteritis because the stomach pH isn't low enough to kill some of the bacteria something called Clostridium difficile infectious diarrhea. This is uh, another bacteria that can cause diarrhea and that type of diarrhea can be very watery and cause serious illness. And again, probably related to uh, the stomach acid not being able to kill the Clostridium difficile if it is ingested. And then because of that decrease in calcium, maybe even osteoporosis or bone fractures because of PPI use. Again, this is very controversial, and the evidence that supports these ad adverse effects is very uh, low to moderate quality of evidence. So there's a lot of evidence supporting it, but the quality of the evidence isn't as good as it could be to really shut the door on whether this is, these are true adverse effects or not. So to summarize, we talked about a number of different PPIs, omeprazole or Prilosec. It's an antimer S omeprazole or Nexium, Pantoprazole or Protonix, Lansoprazole or Prevacid, and then it's an antimer Dex Lansoprazole or Dexalant.